Welcome to the Content Champion Podcast. We provide the training and tools to help you become a content marketing champion in your online business. Introducing your host, the content champion himself, Loz James. Hello again. Welcome to the Content Champion Podcast. Thanks as ever for listening. My guest this time is content marketing expert, Michael Karp, who runs the superb site copytactics.com, which helps people grow their businesses through content marketing. Michael is buzzing with great ideas and the informative in-depth articles on his blog outline all the systems and processes you need to build your online brand and sales using content marketing. So much so, in fact, that after reading loads of his work, I immediately signed up for his email list and bought his excellent book, The Content Marketing Guidebook. The premise behind Michael's method is a seven-step content marketing process that we can all replicate to drive forward our businesses. So that's what we're going to discuss today. Let's dive in. Thanks for coming on, Michael. Hey, thanks for having me. Now, before we dig down into this process, tell us how you got started in the content marketing industry. So I learned I wanted to be an internet entrepreneur after reading the book Escape Plan by Mark Manson. It basically teaches you how to quit your job and travel the world, which is something I really wanted to do. So after reading that, I started off freelance writing. I did that for a few months, and it was pretty good. I did pretty well, but I wanted to find something a little bit more meaningful. And I'd learned a little bit about marketing, but not very much. But then I stumbled upon Copyblogger's ebook um, called How Content Marketing Builds Your Business. And after reading that, something immediately clicked within me that I knew I wanted to be a content marketer. It fit with the way I thought and the way I had interacted with businesses online and the way I wanted to interact with customers online. So what I did was I got some results from my own blog and sent a 400-word pitch email. It was pretty long, pretty detailed, but sent this 400-word pitch email over to 150 inbound marketing agencies and landed my first three clients. Then I was, I was off to the races. That's fantastic. And tell me the story behind Copy Tactics. How did that come about? It came about because um, it actually got started when I was still freelance writing. I was going to do some freelance copywriting as well. So I thought Copy Tactics would be a pretty good name. And eventually, I, when I did start content marketing, I realized that the best way to get clients was to get results for my own blog. So I started teaching people internet marketing on my own blog in order to get clients to do internet marketing for them and slowly blog just just grew like that as I used it as a way to test my skills. Well, I advise everyone to go and have a look. I've just been devouring all your blog posts and content and ebooks and everything, downloading everything, signing up for everything. It's really kind of, uh, you know, when you go to a blog and it's really alive and some blogs are quite dormant, yours seems like I said in the intro to sort of be buzzing with ideas. Right, exactly. I try to fill it with as much actionable content as possible, but also give people a lot of opportunities to get to know me and to find the the areas on my website that are going to help them the most because there's no cookie cutter approach to everything. Everyone's got a different business and different needs. So I just try to make as much of my information available as possible. Okay, well, let's touch on then this seven-step content marketing process that you use on your own blog for client blogs and you've outlined in your book, The Content Marketing Guidebook. Um, It all starts with finding proven content, doesn't it? That's the first of these steps. Right, exactly. So I learned very early on that publishing random content doesn't really work. Um, If you go to my blog right now and check out the first three articles, they don't have a lot of shares. Um, They don't have a lot of comments, and I just wrote those and published them just from an idea within my head. Um, So they weren't proven, and there was no strategy or forethought behind that. And I've seen a lot of people make the the same mistake that I did. Um, So you want to find content that's proven to be um, shareable, basically to drive traffic, and linkable to rank in search engines, because that's the ultimate result that, that you want in this process. But one caveat here, um, this process is based on 
creating content that's meant to drive traffic and generate leads. Um, it's not, so there's, there's a lot of different types of content. There's content for engaging your list. There's content for networking with people in your industry. There's lots of different types, but this is specific for um, content that's trying to drive traffic and generate leads for your business. Okay, well, I think that's what most people listening will be interested in, small, medium-sized businesses. We can right. use tools for this, can't we, like BuzzSumo and things like that? Yeah, exactly. So to find shareable content, I usually head over to BuzzSumo, which is a search engine um, that helps you find um, the highest, most shared content for a given search term. So I head over to BuzzSumo, and I brainstorm topic ideas um, for a, content, a piece of content I might want to create and just plug those into BuzzSumo and see if the top ranking articles there have a lot of social shares. If they do, I probably have found a topic that is shareable and uh, will get shared on, on social media. And then the next step is to find content that's linkable. So you either want to take those specific articles, plug them into Google, or take those, um, those topics and plug them into Google. And then I install the MozBar um, Chrome extension. And when you turn this on, when you're on a search results page, it shows you a bunch of different um, SEO metrics for each search result. And you want to look at how many backlinks each, each article on the, um, on, the fr- on the first page is getting. If they're getting a lot of backlinks, then you found a topic that's both shareable and proven to rank in search engines. Okay, then step two of this process, once you've found your shareable, linkable content, the next stage is keyword research, and a lot of people get confused with this and how it fits into this process. So how does it work in the context of your framework, Michael? Right. The main goal is to find what I call the holy grail of keywords. And these are keywords with high search volume and low competition. And low competition is the main thing there. Um, I still see many people um, who just go to the Google Keyword Planner. They type in potential keywords and they pick keywords based on uh, search volume alone. They don't look at competition or how hard or easy it will be to rank for those keywords at all. So it's very important to check out competition because your keywords set you up for either success or failure. So what I do is I have a manual method and I have a method using um, a really, really good program. The manual method for determining um, competition is you type a head keyword, a, a very broad keyword into the Google Keyword Planner. And you find keywords you might want to base your content around as many as possible. And then make sure the Moz bar is installed and then do a search for each keyword. And you want to look at, you want to find um, a low number of backlinks for, for the, the content that's already ranking for that keyword. You want there to be a low number of back, backlinks, low page authority, and low domain authority. And by low, I mean in comparison to your website and the amount of links you can build. If all three of these metrics are true, then you might have found a keyword with low competition and high search volume, but it's a little bit hard to tell for sure because you're doing it manually. Um, So I found a program called Longtail Platinum that uses kind of the same metrics. They've got an algorithm um, or a calculation, but it calculates from a scale of 0 to 100 how hard or easy it will be to rank for a keyword. It's not perfect, but it's pretty on point when you check out the competition score and do the manual method at the same time, you'll be able to get a pretty good idea of how hard or easy it'll be to rank for each keyword. Okay, and your aim is to find one single keyword for your piece of content as a sort of sort of pillar keyword, as it were. Exactly. One main keyword, and then what I like to do is find related keywords that my content could possibly rank for either now or in the future, and then sprinkle those within my content as well. And it also helps... Google determine how relevant your content is to the main keyword. But when you're optimizing your content around a keyword, you want to optimize it around one keyword. So put that one keyword in your title, your meta description, your URL, and a few other things we can talk about later. Okay, brilliant. So that's stages one and two. Third stage, can you outline how we should conduct our competitor content analysis then? Right. So with competitor analysis, you're trying to outdo the content already ranking uh, for your keyword. And uh, Brian Deed made this extremely popular with his 
skyscraper technique. And it's pretty much the same thing. You want to go into each page ranking for the keywords you might want to target and check out content length, how well they're optimizing for the target keyword, if they're including multimedia like images and videos, and if they're linking out to relevant high authority resources. Because all of these can indicate to Google how valuable a page is. And once you know if, they, if their content is thin, if they're not optimizing their keyword very well, if they don't have images and videos to supplement the, the text, and if they're not linking out to high authority resources, you've got a good chance of creating a piece of content that's better than anything else that's ranking right now. And then when you go to promote it, it automatically, it immediately stands out um, in people's minds, which makes it easier for you to get backlinks, easier to, for you to get social shares, and easier for you to, to ultimately rank. Are there any tools we can use for this, Michael? Because obviously we can do it manually, go through the top 10, whatever, but is there anything we, we could sort of short circuit the process? Not that I know of off the top of my head. Um, I usually do it manually because once you've found a keyword that um, you want to target that's got high search volume and low competition, um, all you need to do is go through the first 10, maybe 10 to 20 results and do a quick um, eyeball of the page. And you should be able to do, you should be able to go through each piece of content within a minute or two. So it's about a 20 minute process. Okay. So those first three steps are really the planning stage, if you like. Stage four, content creation, getting to meat of the whole equation. How do we create something truly engaging and informative that we can then promote for the links and shares that we need? Yeah, well, well first off, um, longer content tends to, tends to rank better. Um, not necessarily because, and there's been a lot of studies about this, but not necessarily because Google prefers longer content in their algorithm, but because longer content tends to include more information and it tends to better cover a topic, which helps it attract more backlinks. Or in terms of um, my content marketing process, it's easier to actively build more links to. So first off, you want to see if you can outdo the amount of information um, that's already ranking or already, already out there ranking for your keyword. Then you want to think about the user experience. Is your content easy to read, um, especially on mobile devices? So you want to look at your, your font, your font size. Are you using bold and italics to make it more readable? Um, are you including helpful images and videos to supplement the text? Um, does your content provide... Um, immediate value because in the internet marketing space actionable content does really well because it provides immediate value and typically in the b2b space this is where you want to be um, in another space like personal development or something that's more b2c teaching something that people can immediately apply to their lives and immediate and provides immediate value um, can be really beneficial because this tends to lead to a piece of content that's linkable and shareable as well so it's kind of step-by-step -step actionable content, stuff that when the searcher is putting in a certain keyword, we've looked around at all the competitor content and we've said, okay, what's the best possible way I can answer this query that they're searching for in Google with multimedia high-quality content? Kind of as simple as that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, great. You're making this sound easy. I love it. <laughs> um, right, fifth on the list then. You touched on this earlier, on-page SEO essentials. What do we need to watch out for here? Um, so there are four main areas of, of on-page SEO. And on-page SEO, people, people really um, dive into this topic. But it, the main goal is just to tell Google what keyword you want to rank for and to show that you've created a valuable piece of content. And then the off-page SEO, the backlinks mainly, are where the real magic happens to get you ranked because that tells Google that other people think your content is valuable. So with on-page SEO... There are four main areas. There's keyword placement, keyword variations, uh, multimedia, and then external linking. So for keyword placement, you want to place your target keyword in the title, preferably closer to the front, in the URL, preferably closer to the front as well, in your meta description, in the first 100 to 200 words, first couple paragraphs, um, in one or two subheadings. In the, I like to place it in the first images, alt text alternative text, and then a couple times in the body content. So not overdoing it with, um, with your keyword, keyword density. And then next, I place a few keyword variations. 
what I like to do is do a search for my target keyword in Google, scroll all the way down to the bottom, and then go to the searches related to section. And you'll find a lot of keyword variations or related keywords to your target keyword. And then I take a couple of those, plug them into the content, whether they look natural, and then I'm good to go for that. And then I add in images and videos, and finally, external linking. You want to link out to relevant authoritative sources. So Wikipedia, Forbes, those types of websites are good. And I've also find it, found it helpful, surprisingly, to link out to some of the pieces of content that are already ranking for your keyword. Mm. Um, I'm not exactly sure why, but I think it's a very strong uh, relevancy, relevancy signal, but it has worked out multiple times for me. That makes sense, actually, because, yeah, that authority is already there and you're trying to beat that authority, so it doesn't hurt to identify with that authority. Right, exactly. And it definitely doesn't hurt to, to test it out and experiment because nothing is set in stone and everything in SEO, content marketing, internet marketing is always changing. And I found, um, I found out a lot of what works by t- doing what people told me not to do. <laughs> okay, so those first five, we've got all our ducks in a row, makes the next section easier. Number six on your list is content promotion. Now, this could obviously be a podcast in itself, but what are some of the main tactics we can use here? So I break down content promotion into two different types. The first one is what I call power play promotion. And you do this right before and right after publishing a new piece of content. And it provides a short but large burst of traffic. And then the second type is daily promotion. And this builds consistent traffic over time. So for power play promotion, the first one I usually do is email outreach. Um, So I reach out to influencers and to people who have shared similar content to mine. Um, what you can do is go to BuzzSumo and type and type in the uh, or search for the, the, the content that's already ranking for your keyword that or was already shared a lot of times. Put into BuzzSumo, then click view sharers and go over to their Twitter account, um, find their website and find their contact info. And just reach out to them say, hey, I noticed you shared this piece of content. Would you like to check out mine? And if they say yes, then you send over your piece of content and possibly ask them to share it. And you can get a lot of really good shares that way. It's a good way to network with people as well. And then for influencers, I do the same type of thing. Find out if they've shared con- the same similar content to yours. Or simply just email them and say, hey, um, I put together this piece of content. I really like what you're doing. Um, I'm trying to get some eyeballs on it and get some, um, get some feedback for it. Would you mind checking it out? If they say yes, send them your piece of content. So that's power play promotion. Um, what you can also do is find communities on the internet. So Facebook groups, LinkedIn groups, Google Plus communities, um, subreddits. Those are four really big ones. Um, forums and go and share your content on all of these, pay, uh, all of these places. Um, another one that I like is Scoop It. So Scoop.it. It's basically a content curation platform. And this is a good one to build backlinks. They're no follow, but um, it's a good place to build some backlinks and to also network with people because the people who create these pages um, are curating a bunch of content. So they're always trying to find good content. And what you can do is you do a search for, say, your topic, say your topic's SEO. You do a search, it'll pull up a bunch of pages where people are curating content. You go in and you find a little box, uh, a little suggestion box, and you put in your, your URL and suggest your piece of content to the page owner. And if they like it, they'll accept it. You get your link, and a lot of times they'll share it on Twitter as well. So you get some social signals there. So that's a good one. And that's basically power, promotion, power play promotion in a nutshell. This isn't long term. It's to get a immediate burst of traffic to help your content go a little bit, a little bit viral or viral if you can get it to go viral. Um, but it's not a long term play. You're listening to the Content Champion Podcast, showcasing the training and tools you need to become a content marketing champion in your online business. Okay, how many people, influencers, people that have shared similar content, do you get in contact with per piece of content that you're uh, publishing? 
usually between 200 and 400 people. If it's a piece of content that I'm really gung-ho about and I know it can do really well, I'll go for 600 or more. So quite a lot. And I use a tool like BuzzDream to uh, create email templates and automate the process a little bit. But it, it is quite a lot of people. And it works out well because you get indirect backlinks from this. Um, and it helps you it helps you network with people. And I've gotten clients. So a lot, there's a lot of other benefits that come other from just getting social shares. Okay. And how about the daily promotion that comes after that? Daily promotion is something that I do consistently. So this is usually about an hour a day, um, sometimes a little bit more if I have extra time. But my, the main tool I use for this is called Buzz Bundle. And Buzz Bundle is a social media marketing software. It helps you um, monitor conversations online and engage with people. But it's also really good for driving traffic and promoting content. So what you do is directly from the interface, interface you um, type in keywords related to your content. And then Buzz Bundle will scan forums, um, social media websites, Q&A websites for conversations where your keywords are happening. So let's say I did an article on driving traffic. I'll type in traffic generation, drive more traffic, uh, increase website traffic. And it'll pull up all those conversations. And then I simply go in and let's say it's a Twitter. Uh, someone posted a tweet like, how do I drive more traffic? I'll just reply to their tweet and say, hey, um, I thought you might like this article, my latest traffic generation article, and, and link to the article and that's it. How many times do you do that a day? I do it for about an hour a day, an hour a day. So, ha- but a half an hour for Buzz Bundle, and then a half an hour for other other types of daily promotion. Okay, and how do those other types of daily promotion pan out? Um, so, what I do is for marketing. That's my main other one. Is uh, you create an account on a form that's active, and set up a signature with a link to your content, and then simply go through the forum, answer questions, help people out and establish yourself as kind of a mini authority on the forum. And then if people want more information from you, they typically go check out your signature, click over to your content, and that's where they opt into your email list and all those good things. Okay, I'm going to come back to results from this because this is fascinating. Um, But we're now on to the seventh and final part of your system, your content marketing process, link building. Now, obviously, again, we could do a whole podcast on this, a series of podcasts. It's a potential minefield for many people, but it's obviously still essential. Uh, what methods are you using here, Michael? So for white hat link building, the kind that I see as long-term and helps you build a long-term business asset, because I have thought about building PBNs and all those other kind of buying links and sketchy things. But I think if you're building a long-term business asset, you want to go white hat. And the idea with that is to find pages where your content can provide value and then reach out to those pages. So I've got three main ones that I usually suggest to people, and they are resource pages, weekly roundups, and trying to replicate your competitors' backlinks. So with resource pages, um, on a lot of websites, people list uh, like a list of tools or a list of really good articles a list of really good websites, all based around a certain topic. And these are perfect for presenting your content to you because you've created a really valuable resource already. And these people are highly likely to link to it because it's on a relevant and on topic that's related to your content. So you do a search in Google for your topic plus resources or your topic plus links um, because those are the words that are typically in these pages. And so say it was SEO, you do SEO research, uh, resources or um, search engine optimization or optimization resources or links and simply go to the website, find their contact information and say, hey, I found your excellent resources page. Um, uh, this is a really good, uh, valuable resource. And I just created a piece of content on uh, something related, like tell them about the piece of content and say, it'd be, um, it'd be great if you consider mentioning it on the page. And that's it. 
So the second one is weekly roundups. And weekly roundups are similar because they list a, they list a bunch of resources. But these articles are published um, on a weekly or sometimes a monthly basis. And it's what the curator has read that week or that month that they found really valuable. And once again, they're trying to find valuable content. So by you showing them your valuable content, you're actually helping them out. So what you can do is do a search for your industry, not necessarily your topic, but your industry, plus weekly roundup or weekly link roundup. And then what you want to do is go into search options and then change the results from any time to in the last month. Because you want to find people who are updating their weekly roundups and publishing these things consistently and uh, they're updating them consistently. Because uh, typically if you reach out to someone who's, who's not publishing a weekly roundup anymore, they're just going to get annoyed with you or they're not going to respond. So you want to find ones that are being updated and published recently. And then same thing. Click through to each weekly roundup and find their contact information. Reach out. Say, hey, I found your weekly roundup. I uh, just created this piece, of art, this piece of content that I think your readers might enjoy. Would you consider it um, for your next weekly roundup or next monthly roundup? Um, and then what you can do to actually find these resource pages and weekly roundups is go to a website called dropmylink.com. And what this does is it's got some drop downs. You plug in um, what you want to search for, so weekly roundup or resource pages, and then it automatically creates the exact um, search parameter that you need to find these, weekly, to find these uh, pages in Google. And you can even search for um, .edu weekly roundups or .edu resource pages, so different top-level domains, and find a ton, a ton of really good link opportunities in a short amount of time. Okay, and what's the third link-building tactic that you're mainly using? The third one is trying to replicate your competitors' backlinks. So the idea here is that if Google thinks a certain backlink profile is worthy of a first page ranking for one piece of content, then that same backlink profile should be um, worthy of a first page ranking for your piece of content as well, as long as they're going for the same keyword. And now if you had the first the backlink profile of not just one piece of content ranking for your keyword, but all of the pieces of content ranking for a keyword, you'd have a pretty strong chance of ranking for that keyword as well. So what you do is you do a search for your target keyword and then you take each URL and plug it into a backlink checker. I like to use um, SEO Spyglass as a good, it's a good desktop piece of software and it's a one-time fee or um, Majestic SEO. That's another good one that I like to use. And plug in each URL and pull up the backlink profiles of each of the people ranking for your, your keyword and simply go through each URL. I like to... Um, I like to sort it by the highest quality backlinks first, so either by page authority or domain authority or something like that. And then go through each, each backlink and try to replicate it. So if it is a blog comment, you post a comment, join the conversation, and then link to your piece of content. If it is a guest post, you suggest a guest post to the author and then link to your piece of content within the, within the guest post. And rinse and repeat this process, go through each link, and try to replicate your competitors' backlinks. And what this does is it helps you build relevant links in your industry, and it can also teach you how your competitors are building backlinks and their, their link-building strategy, and teach you different ways to build backlinks in your, in your own industry. Okay, well, look, that's the seven-step process in a nutshell. I've got two questions that come out of that. The first one is about the process, the daily sort of process. The second one's about results. In terms of the process, how long do you spend, say, on your own content or on clients' content going through that seven-step system? It can take about two weeks to go through an entire seven steps of the process, um, sometimes more depending on how long it takes to create the content. But the content creation can take anywhere from 10 to 20 hours. So put a lot, a lot of effort into researching the content and creating it. And then the promotion can then take another, um, 
another, let's say, 20 to 30 hours over the next few weeks. So it's quite a lot of time, but the results are very, very long term and very high quality because you've put in a lot of effort into it, into the research, and you've got content that's proven, proven to get results, and you know that you're not, you're most likely not wasting your time with anything. Okay, so in that context, you can really say over the course of a month, a few hours a day, you can get your one mega piece of content up and do everything in the seven steps that we've talked about and then leave that and move on to your next content asset and you're going to see long-term results from going through that process. Exactly. It's, it's very much rinse and repeat, um, get better at it, learn. What you learn is which promotion tactics work and which ones don't. And it helps you get through the process faster and faster and faster. And you start scaling up that way. Okay, give us some examples of results, whether it's your own stuff on copy tactics or or for clients. What sort of needle movement have you seen from doing this seven-step process? Definitely. So with one uh, one of my clients, um, who is now my business partner, actually, um, we are in the the drone slash UAV um, industry. And we're becoming a thought leader. We're, we're primarily a blog um, doing training. This is where I did most of my testing on this stuff. And when we first got started working, we've worked together for about a year. When we first got started, we thought it would be a really good case study if we had um, 1,000 subscribers and 10,000 monthly visitors within six months. And we were starting from pretty much nothing, so no subscribers and very small amounts of traffic. And we hit that. We, uh, with about maybe three or four main pieces of content over those six months. Wow. Yeah, so it was pretty big. And one of those pieces of content got us most of our traffic. So it's definitely the the 80-20 principle is in play a lot here. Um, But we hit that. So we hit 1,000 subscribers and 10,000 monthly visitors. Um, But what happened in the next six six months was absolutely crazy. Um, I kept doing the exact same thing. Um, the following the seven step process, doing all the keyword research. And that's when I actually found long tail platinum, which really amp, ramped this stuff up. But in the next six months, we hit 10,000 monthly visitors and, or 10, no, we hit 10,000 subscribers and 140,000 monthly visitors. Wow. So okay. A ridiculous, um, increase in traffic and subscribers from doing the exact same amount of work. It just all compounded upon each other. The good thing about that is that you've just given an example that loads of people want to hear about, obviously, because it's not in the online marketing space. So that's, uh, was yeah. that remote control cars? Um, remote control quadcopters and basically helicopters, but with four, um, four propellers. Okay, so four, you, four or more. So you went into a marketplace with, with nothing, ground zero, and you built up to within really, you know, nine months to a year, you built an email list to 10,000 people and 140 to 150,000 visitors a month. Exactly. And the main, the main metric is that it's now a six figure business. So those leads are, those leads are leading to sales and we're getting, um, um, we're driving revenue from a a number of different places, but it's, it's a six figure business. Now, um, my client was able to, he used to be, an inbound marketer. He quit that because he didn't want to do it anymore. He wanted to do this full time and he's now able to do it full time because it's a, it's a legitimate business now. So the business model there is obviously nurturing through email on the back end and driving people back to sales pages. Yeah, exactly. Um, we've got an autoresponder going and we carefully um, crafted the emails for that and thought about the, the lead nurturing phases and basically doing everything uh, that um, that I talk about on the blog. It was a fantastic process. Uh, before the uh, the PS question on this, I'd just like to uh, get everyone, uh, give everyone that reminder of where we can find you online and also download your free resources and also go and buy your content marketing guidebook as well. Definitely. Um, you can find my articles and actually download a PDF of the seven step process at copytactics.com. And you can buy my book at copytactics.com slash the content marketing guidebook. And I usually make people opt in for this, but for content champion listeners, uh, you can get a 50% discount using code copytactics at checkout. 
And if you want to get in touch, uh, the best way is through email at michael at copytactics.com. That's brilliant. Thanks for that. Wait for it, listeners. Here comes the PS question. Now, this is what I call the PS question. Could you share one more advanced content marketing tactic we could use right after the show, please? Sure thing. I mentioned this briefly earlier, but my favorite content marketing tactic and one that is really actionable that anyone can implement right now is reaching out to people who have shared some of their content to yours. It's how I've gotten indirect links to my content, but mainly it's how I've established relationships with people. I've started joint ventures, gotten guest post opportunities, and actually attracted clients. So head over to BuzzSumo, search for a keyword related to your content or for a piece of content you know that is related to yours. Then click View Shares and click over to their Twitter account, find their their website, then find their contact info and reach out to show them your piece of content. Well, that's a fantastic uh, tactic there. Really great, interesting conversation. And your process is so sort of replicable and scalable. And it's sort of understandable, something that any business can do. So thanks very much for coming on today, Michael. And uh, all that remains to say is I wish you every success with everything you do in future. No problem. Thank you for having me on. And I really appreciate it. You've been listening to the Content Champion podcast, available at contentchampion.com and on iTunes. Until next time, thanks for listening.